Okay, so before we get into today's show, we are going to have a little chat because Kim is gone. We had to give her time off, right? My mom was hired to do this part-time, and since 2022 began, she's been in New York every every week for six weeks besides two weeks. So I was like, Mom, go home. So Kim's home. It's perfect because when this airs, I'm in Italy and Barstool vs. America is airing. So that was the road trip that I went on and I lived on the RV for two weeks. And I have to say, I think it was the turning point for me in New York. And I've almost been here. So now I've been here nine months. Um, And when I first moved to New York, it was really hard on me. Like it was a lot of change at once. It was new city, new job. My mom also being here, like I felt kind of the pressure of that. And it took my body like a very long time to get acclimated. I would have these flashbacks to like times in my life where like life was stable, like restaurants or something. And I asked my therapist, I'm like, why is that happening? She's like, you're craving stability. And I was like, well, I didn't have any of that. So I was like kind of in a tizzy until Barstool vs. America came. And I was like, what is going to happen on this RV? Like, am I going to be okay? I've been anxious. I've been all these things. I went in with the desire to just make friends and like get to know people here on like a human level. And I would say after leaving that, my expectations were far, far exceeded. It was probably my favorite two weeks at Barstool so far. People were competitive, but we had a blast. We got to go to five different cities. You got to just simply like be on an RV with people for 12 hours for a bus ride and just like be on your phone, listen to podcasts, drink (laughs) <laughs> we drank a lot, um, we had a, but we had a blast, and we were competitive, we were driven, you had to be on a lot. I don't know, something about it was, like, absolutely invigorating, and so probably two weeks that I look back on with extreme fondness, um, and Barstool was my dream job since I can remember in college, and being able, I watched Barstool vs. America last year having no idea that I would ever work here. And then being able to be on it this year was like, whoa, like 365 days later, I was on the show. And this time last year, like I had no idea that I would even work here. That was pretty surreal um, and incredible. And I would say that, yeah, I think the only thing I can say is it exceeded my expectations. And I truly loved everybody I went on the show with. And so if you haven't watched it, I really encourage you to go watch it because it's actually, it's good TV. It's very much so like your traditional reality TV show. Um, and it's just people from here that are competing in it. So you get to know everybody. It's, there are some really funny people on it. We laugh, we cry. Um, and it's a really great time. So no boomer move today, no content, Kim, just me and Jeff D. Lowe, who hosted the show who I actually used to be afraid of at work he hosts I I was like so scared of him he hosts Barstool vs America and is the creator and the host of the dozen here Jeff's awesome really well spoken he we talk a lot about behind the scenes and so stay tuned here comes Jeff D. Lowe before we get into Jeff D. Lowe I want to really quickly tell you about Mamita's who is a hard seltzer tequila drink I would say I don't think people believed me at the very beginning of this, but we're getting tagged in a lot more Mamitas drinks, and apparently they have them in Costa Rica, and a lot of people are going to Costa Rica right now. It is the best drink in the entire world. My mom went to Paul McCartney last weekend, and my mom and dad did, and they pregame with Mamitas, and she said she felt great the next day, and I said that's probably because it's 95 calories, less than one gram of sugar, and gluten-free, and made with real tequila. You can get Mamitas at Jewel Osco Publix, Walmart, Target, drinkmamitas.com, or you can order them on GoPuff. We also, every week, we link the store locator so you can find Mamitas near you. You can go pick up a variety pack, and I promise you, you won't regret it. My current favorite flavor is, like, my long-lasting favorite flavor is the Paloma, and it seems like that's kind of a crowd favorite, but I also love the spicy margarita, especially over a glass of ice. So if you're into tequila like everybody is, 
go get yourself some drink mamitas. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Cuz I Said So, your favorite mother daughter podcast. Mine is the mother. Mother not here. Mother not here. Um, sub Jeff D. Low. This looks like the most, bar- the video version of this looks like the most barstool fucking ad read <gasps> of all time. No, we're both in barstool hoodies. Barstool merch. Like, it just looks, this looks so obnoxious. There's no pink in it anywhere. It looks like we're doing like, like a merch promo. Do you hate it or love it? I mean, I'm fine. I don't hate, I definitely don't hate it. But, <laughs> but it is very like funny. It. Oh, wow. Also, thoughts, I now wear these. Okay, I'm these, into... Bra- these, these balance beads, they don't actually make you... Ba- I, I don't think they're balance beads, but like, remember when they used, they used to have like balance bracelets? I do remember that. What would it do? Make you actually... And people would yeah. like hit you and you wouldn't tip I over? Just, I bought like really cheap ones at H&M. And I've been wearing them this summer down the shore, but they look so cheap and tacky that I'm like, I got to get like real looking ones. Wait, wait, wait. I, I like when guys wear bracelets. Like I buy them for Graham. So I'm kind of into these. Why okay. do you think they look cheap and tacky? No, no. These are the nice ones. Okay. I these I got. Say, these look nice. The, the H&M ones looked very cheap and tacky. These are cool. Yeah, these I like. Okay. Let me ask you this. If you're in a short sleeve shirt, do you still wear them? Yes. I actually prefer. Yeah. I, I am transitioning to mostly button downs for the summer. So oh, you're doing a I've, been, I've been doing long sleeves because of, because of my unfortunate psoriasis incident that I have all over my body that you found I covered it up. Yeah. It happened during, during Barstool vs. America. Barstool vs. America. What happened? Remember Livestrong bracelets? Yes. Those yeah. were cool too. We should bring those back. We should bring those back yeah. or just even, even like a Barstool one. Well, I heart boobies. I heart boobies. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. All those. Uh-huh. Um, what was I going to ask you about bracelets? Did you ever have a mood bracelet? Um, no. No. Are you wearing these to balance no. or because you think they look cool? I, I, I think it, I don't know. Definitely I'm, not to balance. I guess look, if you gave me only one of two options, I guess look cool is the answer. Why'd you go with three? I, I feel like three is the proper amount. I've, I've tip, somebody told me yesterday you should only go two, but I think most wear three. When decorating or anything that's an accessory, it should always be an odd number. Okay, so yeah, two, should be three. this doesn't look right. Two's not near as swag. This looks right. The three is cool. Yeah, it looks. It's. I I added the gold chain last summer. Um, I'm really not Italian, so that's kind of a tough move. <laughs> German, but. Yeah. yeah, low doesn't give me Italian vibes. Mm, no. I'm into the guy bracelets. Okay. Though, for the record, All right, I'm keeping them. For the people listening, get a bracelet. It's just gonna be a, a summer shore thing. That's what it's gonna be. Just going down the Jersey Shore. Need a little. Need a little jewelry. Yeah, you do. No, it's yeah. nice. Tomorrow we're gonna find out. So. If you're listening to this on Wednesday, mm-hmm. we have one more episode left of Barstool vs. America where we find out. Yeah, that's Wednesday, what, the 29th? Yeah. Yeah, the finale is the 30th. The 30th. So we, mm-hmm. we don't know who wins yet. No. Jeff and I know who wins. You're still alive in the competition. You might win. You might lose. I'm 4-0. Oh. You you did not get eliminated. You made it to the finale. That was that's actually a big deal. huge. That's a big deal. Did you think I would get eliminated? I thought you'd probably be the first to go. You said you to, thought you'd be the first to go. You, too. Said, you could tell. You go. You said at a happy hour to me. You go. You were either going to be one or you were going to stay. The yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I figured had you lasted the first, you had the massive disadvantage of being the least known. Out of, I mean, we know you, but like you have been around the shortest amount of time. Oh, Joey too. Yeah, Joey but too. Joey came. I mean, he came in way. Joey bigger. is so. <laughs> How are you going to eliminate Joey? Yeah, but. I, I figured if you would have stayed the first day, you probably were you were probably good to go. Probably had anybody else been team cat that I was probably gone. Not not Pat. Well, Nick's Nick's elimination of KB was big. Was big. Was I? I guess I should have seen that coming. But Nick is just not a guy who likes to really like. He doesn't like to piss people off and upset people. Right. So like the move was to eliminate his friend <laughs> that he could probably like mend like fences with. Um, he, I mean, he ended up being pretty ruthless the rest of the way. Yes. But I, I think anyone else, you probably would have been booted. I thought for sure. Yeah. But when you said that to me, it confirmed everything I was thinking. Yeah. I, I, I but then I, I also, there was never a point in the show going up to the finale where I thought you or Dana would get eliminated. I always just kind of figured you guys were safe. Really? Yeah. I knew I, Dana was. I mean, maybe if, okay, no. And I mean, if, if like. If Nick wouldn't have eliminated you, someone would have eliminated Dana, but like Nick would have never kicked you guys off his own team. I don't think he would have. Like the Pat thing is not surprising that he eliminated Pat no. from your own team. Mm-hmm. But I knew he was pretty. He seemed pretty loyal to Dana. He seemed pretty loyal to you. So I, I never thought that was going to happen. Yeah, I agree. And and had it been the other team, they wouldn't kick me off because I'm not a big threat. But they would totally have kicked Dana right. off. Right. Just like with right. Marty. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so explain. Actually, in the, la in the last episode, White Sox Dave made a pretty crazy comment to you. He did make a comment to me. He should have, and I wanted to eliminate him, but then at the end, I, I couldn't and I didn't want to. Yeah, he, he really made a pretty, I don't even know if it makes the edit. I haven't seen the fourth episode, but he made a pretty wild comment to you that was like, it's like, man, you're a dick. Yeah, he was like, hey, I, I've, I knew White Sox Dave for like 14 hours. And he was like, hey, I need to replace my bathtub. Would you mind not taking the money? Yeah. And I was like, wait, what? Also, he, also, he said that whatever you – he basically said whatever you won, he would – if he limit, he go, he said to you, he goes, if you win tomorrow or in Boston, which no one's seen yet, he says, if you win there, whatever – if I get captain and eliminate you – I will donate your winnings to charity. I believe is what he was like trying to spin it as. Yes, he was saying he wasn't. Which is even just gonna... such bullshit. He's gonna fix the bathtub if he wins. Which is just such bullshit. Yeah. yeah, he's so full of shit. Yeah, I agree. I was completely blindsided by that comment. Yeah, he's yeah. Okay, let's talk about this. You've hosted this show twice in a row. It's only been yep. around for two years. Yep, two seasons. Two seasons. When we started tweeting the promos, everyone was saying. Barstool doesn't survive without Jeff D'Lo. That's just not true. That's very not true. It's very nice and humble of you. It's it's cool that I have two shows that are, are well-liked and, and it's impactful. Yes. I mean, The Dozen is very much that case. Absolutely, without the a doubt. The Dozen season three. D I actually know. <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. You can decide not to. I know what team you're going to be on. I'm, I accept. I can't say it. Okay, verbal acceptance. I can't say it. It's, a, it's, it's actually a fairly large deal, what's happening. Um, but I won't say. I'll tell you after. I would. Like I know. To. I know what team you will be on, unless okay. something happens. But it's ninety nine percent sure. I want to be on the dozen so bad. No. You used to scare me because I didn't know you before Barstool vs America, <laughs> and fair. so I was always like, I'm never gonna be able to be on a team. No, I'm very. I'm very. My my rule with the dozen is is just come on and have some fucking respect for me. And I don't like if you come on if you come on the show and you don't <laughs> respect it. Then that just irritates the shit out of me. But uh, that's why I let anyone on. If you come on, and you make a mockery of it. It's gonna piss me off. Right. Because like there's a, like we're a very small team. Out the tournament takes a when we do like the finale tournament of the dozen. It's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Like if you watch the the championship match, we had a list of people in the credits. It was like forty people. Wow. All the way from like whether it's like the Caitlin Walkers of the world who were just making sure everyone took their fucking jersey off and like like left it on the rack to people who edited like all the nonsense that they edited. Um, but like the normal dozen, it's just me, my one producer, and then we have one guy kind of helps out on the side. So like, I still edit the dozen. Like, I like, so like, it's a lot, it's a, not brain surgery, but it's a lot of work. So I would like if people just come in and just like have like a, a mild ounce of respect for the game. Absolutely. Cause there are a lot of, cause most people take it seriously. And honestly, most importantly, our fans take it very seriously. People love the dozen. They get very seriously. So I, that's my thing. Not so, but my point being anyone could have come on. I want to come on. So yeah, you you are you're in for season three. You I yes. know your team. Okay, I'm I can kind of a, wait. It's kind of a wild twist. Oh God. Okay, you have to tell me after. Yeah, I will. That's a good point though because there's so much. Well, hold on. This is what I want to say to you first. I thought I watched season one twice because I wanted to prepare for season two, and I watched you deliver the speeches. Like basically, you're the game host. You are the game host. But I didn't realize how much like you have to be there so far ahead of time. Yeah. It's which I I kind of love. Like it's it's very so the dozen is a lot of work and it's very hard. Barstool America is not hard at all. It's very easy. It's like the definition of a dream job. Why? Like to just do to just host a reality show because like I don't. I mean, there's prep work in it and like I help produce a little like a little behind the scenes and like game creation and stuff. But, like that's just fun. Like you, that's, well, that's fun. That's because you're passionate about. Yeah. It. Yeah. Like that's fun, but like. I just kind of have to go there and perform. And, like, that's cool. The Dozen's, like, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff and prep. And then when it's over, like, when the, when we're done shooting Bars with America, I'm done. Right. Like, you're I'm not out. editing nothing. No, we're the Dozen. Even, like, the tournament. I didn't edit the tournament. But, like, there's still a lot of, like, checking stuff and, like, going through graphics and, like, helping social. Like, there's a lot of shit. This is just kind of like you just do it and you're done. How are you so good, though, at showing up and saying the lines? Like, you – do you practice? Like, the way you deliver I watch it. a lot of reality shows. I watched a lot of shows that I hadn't seen. Like, I had not been fully caught up on, like, The Challenge, for example. I'm a big Survivor fan. Okay. I watched some old Amazing Races that I hadn't seen. I don't know. You just kind of have to just – you have to watch the best of the best and just kind of know it. You also have to, like – so, yeah, we do show up early. 
I'm on set before we film for a challenge and before you guys arrive. Because so for context, for people who don't know, you guys arrive and probably sit there for like an hour, mm -hmm. sometimes more. But it, we were pretty tight this year on timing. You were there probably there for like an hour before we started challenges. I'd be there sometimes four hours. It'd be, it'd be anywhere between two and four hours early. This year, I think I was there a little less. Last the first season, I was there very early. This year, I could kind of get it down because I knew it a little better and I was a little more comfortable. But I was still there for two hours, and it's just a lot of pacing around standing there. But you do you have to say your lines multiple times? Or are you like a one I, hit? I, I, I don't like write stuff down. This year, I went off. I didn't have a card this year. I tried to go without the card because like none of like the best hosts do mm -hmm. that. It's like I'm like I don't need a card. Like let's not do a card this year. So I'll like run through like when I show up for a challenge, I'll run through with our producers and the people that created it, and I'll out loud it's when i explain the big thing is the rules explaining right all there right. is ad lib and like it's mostly just asking you guys questions that's easy as uh, easy as can be mm -hmm. explaining the rules of the game is tough at least like on the first try so like i'll go through i'll walk through the game and then i'll kind of do a practice run before you guys get there and then i'll just rip it and hopefully not have to like redo it i've right. only had to redo it one time afterwards i'm like i feel like i could have condensed that more I thought we were going to be sitting there and you were going to be running the lines for an hour and we were all going to no, be standing there. No, it's pretty quick. I and I and like okay. I also think it's important to keep it quick too because like you're not, and in that moment you're there to do the challenge. You don't want to sit there and listen and listen. No, because so, part of it's competitive. Mm, yeah, and this year too, a big thing was that make adding a little more humor to it. Um, I'm not inherently as funny as like a KB or Nick, but like I, my humor, my humor is very dry. But like I think there's ways to like do some self deprecation and like be funny with it. And that's why this year like the first challenges I thought were a little more they were a little looser mm -hmm. like when i came into the paintball thing then me like boating in madison like boating was funny it, it was about like i i thought we could add a little more of a light tone to at least the beginning challenges because the second ones are a little more serious and like in the end you guys are pretty tense like you don't want to go home you don't want right. like you want to win still so we kept those a little more serious but I, I i tried to at least play off the people we had this year i think the first year's cast was great i think this year you have like way different personalities you have Joey, you have Nick KB. So like it had to be a little different. It couldn't be the same. It had to be a little more loose, I think. Yes. The thing about Joey was at first we were like, okay, he's funny. But the thing that surprised me about him was like the heart, the integrity, oh, like, yeah. the love of the game. Did that surprise you? Very no, because I think he's a guy built in reality. Like he's he knows the shows and he knows how that world works. He was he was competitive. He was very competitive and funny. He cracked me up. I mean, I knew he'd be good, and he lived up to the hype. He was he was a riot. I thought he was so good. It I was guess. he was he was he was pretty great. Who, and then what? Go ahead. No, say. And then people who came in were good too. They were good. No, the people. Glennie was short lived. Yes, Glennie was. Glennie in got his. <laughs> Glennie got his trip. I think Glennie liked that though because okay, here's the thing. They might not know if people can we say if people were eliminated, they stayed with us. Yeah, they did. Yeah, because for spoiler reasons. Right. Because if, because if, if, for example, if KB gets eliminated the first day, then comes back and does the yak. It's like, well, then KB clearly, like, they clearly kick people off. And I would say for the most part, people don't know we eliminated people. I don't think people are aware of that. I think there's probably a sense that we change things. Right. Like I think like if you could really guess, you'd probably guess that we eliminated people. Yes. But like they stayed on the trip the whole time. Yeah. So then he was sleeping in hotel rooms. He was. He, and having was, just the best was, time. Yeah, he was he was down bad initially though. He was pretty he was bummed. Upset he was upset because you. Yeah. He, it was he didn't know he was gonna get eliminated. Nobody knew. You guys didn't know. Which I, which that's genuine. Which I, I mean, I'm sure some people are like, oh, they had to have known. You guys didn't know you were gonna get eliminated. You might have an you might have had an idea. No, we had no idea. Somebody thought it might happen in the moment in Tampa. I could in the moment. And somebody said bring out Glenny balls, and I was like, well, Glenny is like, I'm like, come on, how do you know Glenny's coming out here? So, which I think I think he someone said he may have told somebody. <laughs> I don't know. That's. I can't confirm that. Um, so yeah, it, it's it was uh, it, it was it was tense. It was it was wild. What do you think is the thing that the viewers have no idea about? Like, what's one thing we can tell them? Like, is it that we sleep under overpasses sometimes? Yeah, like, the sleep situations do suck. They actually suck. Yeah, like not great. Um, I think just the amount of time we're on set. Yeah, the day well, the you're days on are set like, a lot. The day the days are long. Again, it's very fun. It's, I, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I thought it was a blast. It's it's a lot of fun. I I, I it is my favorite thing I do here. Not even close. Really? But it's 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 long. Like it is not. It's you don't just go. You don't just show up, read the lines, then leave. No. Like you show up and you stand around. You sit there for a, a while. And 
if you're somebody who doesn't like boring situations, it's probably fairly miserable. Yes, absolutely. But what do you what do you like? Because at nights we'll go to happy hours. So some nights we have happy hours that we host. Yeah. And then some nights we would go out all of us. Just we by we were le- we drank less this year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Last time was significantly drunker. Uh, we started in Dallas. Our first night was not as the the happy hour was pretty drunk. I went out alone the second night with high school friends in Texas, and I, I was it was bad. Really, I I I was so hungover my first day in Dallas that it, it just I was never right the rest of the trip. Uh huh. It was bad the but whole you way. You can re- you can go out like you're you don't really miss like nights. Yeah, I don't like to. You're pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. You're I appreciate welcome. I appreciate that compliment. What's your shot? I try to be. What's your shot you take? I'm a Vegas bomb guy. No, there was another one you Kamikaze? were Kamikaze? No. It Anything. Was, it was gross. You were taking what did we it in take? Nashville. Oh, in at Nashville. the Tin Roof. We were at the happy hour there and you're no, like No, I I it was I bought I got a Vegas bomb. You what? got something else though. Yeah, you but you picked it and I remember being like this is going to suck. That was the most hungover I was. Nashville, by far. Most hungover I was on this trip. Let me think. Tampa. I was in Tampa before the trip started. I was definitely the most hungover before that. I met a. I met like forty people and became friends with them. Yeah, you were on like a yacht. Yeah, yeah. That's what I do. Like yeah, I just. Were- I go to cities and I just meet people and just become friends with them. Yeah, you were doing that. Um, I'm very. Fr- I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. I'm. Pr- I'm probably a grumpy curmudgeon a lot, but I'm also a very friendly person. Me like to meet new people. Yeah, but- yeah. That's why I laughed that I, that you used to scare me because you're very friendly. <laughs> Tampa like, wasn't that bad. No. It was a very tame happy hour. Mm-hmm. Probably. I actually like that one the most. Nashville, I, Nashville was. We were out late in Nashville. Nashville was just Nashville. Like we also got, we also got dragged to like Jason Aldean's. Yes. And someone bought us bottle service. Big mistake. It was like four a.m. and then he like he like took the menu and he showed it to me and Keeks. He's like, "What do you want?" I said, "Dude, no, no." I said, "This, I'm not the, I'm not the person." I said, "I need to go home." <laughs> Um, I have to go to bed. And he showed it to Keeks. He said, "What? Hey, what do you want from like the bottle service menu?" She goes, "Oh, vodka soda." Like that's not gonna be the order. That's I'm like I'm like yeah we'll take four thousand vodka sodas. <laughs> a bottle of vodka. We went out in Nashville. We went out in Nashville non happy hour night. Did you go out with us? When we went out. I forget. I went out with you. Well, no, one night we had a team dinner. And we ended up staying at the Airbnb. All of us. Right. We did that. There yes. was that night. Remember because we were it was there. Very cold. It was very cold, and we had the off. The NFL day. draft was on. Yes. We stayed. We stayed. We ordered a bunch. We were both doing our expense Bad reports. Food. Bad food. We ordered a ton. What is that called? Uber Eats? Uber Eats, yeah. And then another night happened, and I went out with you guys, but then I came home early because I remember getting on the bus at 6 a.m., and Pat hadn't slept yet. Sounds about right. And he came back, and he was like, we stayed out too late. And I was like, ah. So Nashville, I would say, Madison, Wisconsin, I I was fairly hungover. Oh, no, 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 not even that. I showed up. I I was absolutely up until 10 minutes before. We started log rolling. I was drunk. Really? Not even a question. Uh uh-uh. uh. I, I absolutely was. We, because we went out, we went out to, we, it was a, co- it's a college town. It's Wisconsin. It was like, a blast. We went out and, like, we just, it was very fun. It was a lot of fun. And, like, no, like, no issues, no problem. Made it back hotel fine, no problems. Mm-hmm. But was just, I was absolutely, I rolled up to that challenge drunk. Didn't do the challenge drunk. I, 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 Snapped out of it pretty quickly. Yeah, I could tell. Oh, boy. Oh, when I woke up, I was like, uh-oh. You're like, <laughs> oh, oh no. no. Well, the log rolling was, that was the worst day by far, I thought, of the whole trip. Oh, it was miserable. It, it was it was, mi- it was fucking miserable. And I don't know why in my head I thought we'd be in, like, indoors in, like, a pool. Yeah. Which it probably should have been. Though, I mean, hindsight, whatever. Like, you don't plan for, you don't plan for a show in May to be 35 degrees. No. You just don't. I mean, like, in the moment, everyone's like, this is... I was like, this is very bars, this is dumb. But, like, you don't plan for it to be 35 degrees in May. It was freezing. It was, it was, the cold is what snapped me out of my being drunk. Oh, I'm sure it was like an ice bath. Yeah, it was, it was horrible. That was like the middle, too. So we were like, we have another week left. We're in Madison. But then I thought it was all downhill. Like, we went to Chicago and Boston, blast. Chicago was, was, was fun. Boston was fun. Yeah, I mean, it was good. Last year was significantly drunker. Ah, wow. I, I, which, okay, so with that. uh, PCB was, was like a disaster last year. It was also warmer, though. It was warmer. We also we stayed in this hotel that was a brutal, brutal hotel in PCB because we 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 cut the corner instead of like staying somewhere like okay like the okay we just wanted to stay next to the beach ah and we oh the hotel was so bad. Do you know what we would say sometimes? And this is probably what happened to you in this hotel. We'd say we're just drinking high noon so we can sleep through the night. Right. 
Just drinking to go to bed. Yeah, just just you know, drink, uh, get a couple nooners, the hundred cal nooners, and just and just have a buzz and go to sleep. I was do I would have those for dinner sometimes. The the hotel this year that was bad was Madison. Madison was gross. I have really bad OCD, like really, really, really bad OCD. Mm-hmm. And like I hope the expense report goes through in this, but I have to buy a blanket when I get to a city, <laughs> and I have to lay it on the bed because I can't lay on hotel sheets. They just they disgust me. The hotel sheets in Madison, like they had like brown like streaks on the side uh-uh, and like uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh. I I That's I disgusting. I ripped off every piece of bedding on those sheets and I stuffed them in the corner of the hotel room and then I threw things on top of it so I didn't have to look at them. That's I dis- didn't want to be reminded of the fact that they existed. That's dis- that is disgusting. The the, the hotel the, like like the ho- like the turn down people, they must have come in my room when I left and been like, What the fuck happened? They were probably here? like, What on earth? He had a party in here where all I did I just ripped off I was I was so skeeved and grossed out. Out. Uh, I, and I was so tired from arriving in Madison too because we were a lot late in Nashville. We flew in, then we drove. Um, the it's like an hour and a half ride to, to Madison, and all I wanted to do was sleep. So I threw all the all the bedding off, everything, just disgusting. And I laid down two uh, bath towels Ew. on top of the. Ew. And I just laid and I like curl. Oh, and Ew. then I went to Target and bought a blanket. I don't blame you. You know what? Well, the first thing I was going to say is I was nervous about this. I was nervous about if we were changing teams this year, having to just like sleep in the same bed as some, but that didn't happen. So that was nice. Yeah. So that was the first thing. But the second thing is traveling, like you guys would fly and then drive. Mm -hmm. It was almost, while your travel day was shorter and we were on the bus the whole time, it was almost nicer maybe being on the bus. Well, that's what they said last year. Last year, the winning team in the second to last stop got to fly to uh, the Jersey Shore for the final challenge and they kind of joke they're like it was nice to be here early and sleep in a hotel but also it's like they're like it kind of would have been nice to just sleep on the bus honestly you do nothing like you just ride the bus listen to music podcast like for 12 hours you're doing nothing yeah i i, I did i thought that was nice it's the oddest thing when we were done i was like i'm a little relaxed yeah like it was it was a fun trip i uh, yeah it yeah I, the the hotel is like it's definitely a perk like it's it's nice to like fly and get there and like but like I, again, hotels gross me out, and like so like everything grosses me out though. So I'd probably be not good anywhere. <laughs> but you had a shower. Yeah, the shower was nice. The shower that that's nice, like clean mm-hmm. water. That's kind of nice. Yeah, that was that was that was benefit. I'm trying to think what the nicest hotel. Chicago, right? Chicago hotel was really nice. Yeah, the Chicago hotel was cool. I like the Chicago hotel. Like the, the Boston hotel was weird. It was like the Boston hotel was like futuristic. It was very bizarre. Yes, it was. It was very different. The hotels kind of matched the cities, I would say. They did. They definitely did. We stayed in a hotel. My favorite hotel on in the two trips of Barstool's America was the Dallas Hotel, the first one, because they opened it up the week we got there. Oh. Like, I, we were ripping plastic off of everything. Like, That's it, sweet. I was the first person to ever stay mm. in my hotel room. I did use the sheets. and I was like, well, this is great. Yeah, brand new. I don't also, need anything. Dallas is fun. PCB ruined my life that well, in the first season. Yeah, well, it PCB was so would. fucking gross the hotel room that that's when I started buying. I bought blanket. I, I was like, I can't sleep in this bed. Yeah, and, and you have nothing else. We to had do. two beds in my in the second bed. We ripped up. I ripped up the covers and there was sand underneath all the gross. sheets. Gross. Uh, gross. One of the uh, Snapchat Steve, who does all of our Snapchat stuff here, he's been on both trips. He had somebody just in his room when he checked in. No. My my phone had no plug into the wall. It was no. just it was like a prop phone. No. TV wouldn't turn off and it was plugged through into the wall so you couldn't yank the cord oh. out. It was it was it was a horror show. It was this is PCB brutal. was bad. That's mm. bad. So that's but I but I met people there. Right. And I became friends with them, and that's how I had friends in Tampa. So there was there was some silver lining. There was silver lining. Okay, of all, let's do superlatives really quick. Of all the cities, what was your favorite this year? Favorite this year, I would have to say Tampa. Tampa's your favorite city. Mm-hmm. Okay, what was your least favorite city? Least favorite, probably probably Wisconsin. Yeah, Madison. Madison. I like Madison a lot, but it was so fucking cold. And I just couldn't do that. It was just brutal conditions. The the cold sucked. Like I I I hate the cold weather, and it was the log rolling was miserable, and I wasn't even in the water. Right. Miserable. And then the the second challenge was fucking freezing too. What was it? It was the big orbs, like the zorb balls. Oh, freezing. That was terrible. I, I hated Madison. You're, I forgot about that. I really hated Matt. It was just it was too cold. Was also, too cold. we went to, we went to dinner, and the dinner kind of sucked. This is my favorite steakhouse really? in the United oh, States of America. No, it's because you've got martinis. I, it's, it's where I fell in love with martinis, but what an iconic old – like, you didn't have to chew that steak. I don't even eat red meat, and I liked it. That steakhouse was so overrated. 
It was the first time I've met White Sox Dave, and he was sitting across from me. White Sox Dave put on like a fucking performative show that night. He was like, "How are you not gonna eat red meat?" And I was like, "I'm gonna do it." He would be why is he being such a doofus that night? And I would tell it to his face too. He's like, yeah. "I'm not, I'm not sleeping on the bus in Chicago." I'm like, "Well, you then you're off the show." <laughs> yeah, then you had the, you then you're to. done. He was funny. I I loved him. He I, was putting on a show, and then he like then he like came back down to earth the next day. But Dave was very funny. He was funny. Dave, he was Dave good. in the in the final challenge is like must see TV. It's without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, so that's that's gonna be my net. What's your favorite challenge? You can include the last. The one. last challenge. I think the last challenge was I don't know who designed it. I did. You designed myself it? and Logan and Rob, who also does it. Like we, I so I drew it on Photoshop. And then we took it into Zoom on our Zoom call with like the guy who designs all the like does the actual physical design and Logan and I kind of tinkered with it and and did it. So that's why it's my favorite. Like I like had a hand in like making that whole thing and and then Lo- so it was initially going to be like a pie chart. Mm-hmm. It was going to be like it would be like a triangle like this and you would like hit each station and come back. And then Logan had the idea. It's like hey, for shooting it, let's do the long. So we changed it on the fly and we did the long way. And so that's how we yeah. You so got, Logan and I did that in Photoshop. Rob had a good hand in that as well. It was very cool. So we got to like really do that uh, from the start. I like the water balloon one as well. The water balloon was one interesting. was it was a twist on a, on it was a twist on one which I forget what it's called. It's from Survivor Heroes vs Villains, um, where they slide down a slip and slide and they grab a ball and they throw it into a hoop. Okay, and so that's why the slip and slide was involved. The Tampa one was really cool. Uh, Tampa one was a nightmare though, digging the ta- in the sand. The Tampa one was. I thought if it gets harder than this, I can't. You're gonna laugh at yourself when you see it. Oh. You digging the sand was like I don't want to call it pathetic, but it was like pathetic. <laughs> you were like you were digging like this oh, my with like hands. your fingernails. I still have like I still have some like. You're, you're gonna be stunned how little ground you were making up the entire That'd time you're so digging. Sad. That's where you're important though, it's because like when you're blindfolded, the only like I could hear Nick kind of all I could hear was. Which you. that's where it gets challenging because calling like a blindfolded one is tough because you can't give away a lot of stuff. But you were letting me know Joey was still digging, and that was making me not feel like a complete idiot. Chicago one was good. I wish it was a little closer um, in terms yeah. of, like, final result. Um, the, uh, the final challenge is great. The final challenge, when we pulled up to it, I remember looking outside being like, no. The redemption challenge is great, too. That I love, that? which I won't say what it is yet, but I love that redemption challenge. Like, that's my favorite type of reality game show, Why? like, game. It's easy to call mm-hmm. in my role. It's easy to figure out who is in the lead. Again, I'm not going to spoil what it is. But, like, I, I just like it. I like it a lot. That was cool because every single one of them wanted back in the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that made, Very cool. that made that. The the Zorb soccer one didn't pan out. I'll, like, on, like, I think it's a great idea. It didn't pan out. It was, so, it was such a blowout. Yeah. And in hindsight, like, you kind of wish, like, you would have, like, maybe, like, tinkered some rules of it. But you just don't know. Well, you've never done it before. So it's like you don't know. And, like, people were mad. Keegs and Hanukkah were screaming at us. They were very mad. That that was different this year. The first year people thought I designed and, like, made all the fucking rules. And we made it very clear, so I did not. Not that I wanted to pass the buck and the rebound of the bus. But it's like, in my area, like, I talked to Rowan about this because Rowan went and hosted another reality show we filmed. And I said, they're going to get mad at you. And sometimes you just got to take it. You just, yeah. <laughs> you just, yeah, you do. You You're just have old. to take it and you have to just kind of smile and like just let them yell at you. Because in the end, like they're competing and like they'll be fine afterwards. And Everyone was totally fine. Yeah. yeah that's that one, that one didn't, I mean, had that one been closer maybe, but it just, you just don't know. Like it, when we talked about that one, it sounded great. I, w- I would have thought that one would be, Pat, you, you, what? Yeah. He was just like a force. He was, he was crazy good. Yeah. He yeah. was crazy good. That's, is that, that's not the one. No, that would be yesterday. Chicago would be the one. It was the memorization one, yeah. The memorization of the cans, and then you have to go th- up and up and through. And yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. So, all right. Who? This will be the last two questions. How long have we been going in? Um, twenty-eight minutes. Okay, perfect. We do thirty. Um, what person surprised you the most? Since we, well, never mind. The person who surprised me the most. People are gonna be most surprised that Nick was so competitive. That doesn't surprise me because I know Nick is competitive. Okay, uh, Nick was um, wow. But that will surprise people the most. Um, surprised me the most. Damn, that's tough. That's hard. I like this sounds weird to say, but everyone kind of did what I expected. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like. I mean, I think people may say you because, like, you're just the newer of the crew. But, like, I knew you'd integrate well. I watched – like, I've seen – I'd seen you in the office. Like, I wasn't surprised that you integrated well. Surprised me the most? Probably Joey. I, I would say Joey. 
Joey he had his moments where he's gonna be he's like, ah, it's like this, I'm not gonna do this. He's like, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Then he would always do it. Joey probably surprised me. Mm-hmm. He Joey lived up to everything I thought Joey would be, but he was a little bit Cause better. Because you know what? Like he he was captain in Nashville. He did that and he did it well. He just unfortunately did it well for the wrong team. Did it really well. Yeah. Uh he the paintball thing was hilarious. Like he was great in Nashville. I, I would I would say Joey. Pat did what I thought Pat would do. Dane and Marty done the game before. Keegs is always very down on herself, but Keegs plays the game very hard. Very so hard. I wouldn't even say like anybody overly like surprise me i i, I hannah cook yeah. hannah cook integrated well survived yes yes um but i, I would i'd probably say joey yeah surprised me the most i would agree with that what do you think about going for being four and oh and then the only challenge really mattering is the last one it's tough but i mean that's kind of like it, it's it's different in a in a game where nobody gets eliminated well people do but you always have four people it's it's tough, and I won't like say like how it kind of ends and like what like what like the how the ending goes. And people kind of know if you watch the show, it's like the money. You kind of pick who wins money and stuff. Right. I mean, I I think last year you could kind of make the argument. People always make the argument at last year's show that like it didn't matter because we swapped teams, but I do think it did. It mattered how you stacked your team. That's the whole. It thing It matters about for it. the end. You're building. Like you like you build your team, and like the the yellow team will add somebody back, and that's important. It was in. Imp- that final elimination from Nick was very important. It's like, do you want to strengthen your own team? Do you want to kick off you, Dave, or or Dana? Do you want to weaken the other team? Like it, 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 it does matter in the end. But also, like the the final one, you'll see has a lot of skill sets from what we've done sort of already too. So, I mean, that, that's kind of the product of the game. That's like, why I ended up I ended up loving that about. I mean, it, in the end, like 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 survivors is a good example. It's like. It kind of it comes down to that last challenge anyway, and the last challenge is some typically like mental and physical at the same time. So like you could dominate, dominate, and then if you're not smart or not quick on your feet, you kind of lose. So, right, and yeah. you have to know your teammates. You, have to you know do their like strengths. you building your team this year was very important. We were pretty open about the rules too, mm-hmm. so it was important. Like you knew who came in, you saw like Glenn was the first in, Hannah was second in. It's like right, who comes in next? So yeah, yeah, it was it was incredible. Um, okay, so we can pretty much wrap up there. Yeah, I mean, finale. Finale tomorrow. Very good. I think the finale. I have not watched the finale yet. I obviously know what happens, but I think all the challenges in the finale were, were, were very, very classic reality show challenges. It was the best. There's one that is like the most classic. You guys hated it. Hey, I won't say what it is. You guys hated it. Hated it. It's more mental than it was the last team, is the last captain challenge. You guys despise it. It is the most classic classic reality show challenge i can't wait to see how can we say that that it maybe took three hours can we say that oh the, the final yeah i'll leave it at that we'll leave it okay. at that it's just phenomenal the final challenge was crazy but like the the redemption challenge is awesome mm-hmm. the captain challenge is very different a little maybe on the more mental like mean-spirited side Brutal. that's my hint Brutal. and then the, and then the the finale is a, a beast beast huge challenge yeah Yeah. very cool yeah it's worth watching so if you haven't caught up go catch up i don't really feel like we gave anything away no and then the the finale tomorrow it's still still funny and worth watching there's also so many jokes that i can't say right now that were cut out of the show and it's just very really yeah you can tell me after we 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 made we made some jokes there was a running joke that joey made the whole time oh yeah and it was like it, it was. It got cut out. It was laugh out loud funny. Well, I, I won't it, say what it is. You can't obviously. Say it or I can't cancel. <laughs> but um, it was, it was, don't cancel the show, Jeff. Joey was, Joey was. Joey is so much. I think the thing about Joey and Pat that that people don't know is they're that funny camera or right. no camera. Joey made jokes off camera, and I'm like, I'm like, we're not even rolling right now. He's just a funny person. There was times where I like I couldn't breathe. I yeah. I there's one that might get left in, but we'll see. It was. Overall, would you like? Would you you say it's your favorite thing? It's my favorite thing to do here. I think Absolutely. it's a blast. Yeah, yeah, love not it. even. It's not even close. Everyone I love go it. Watch it. I love it. Go watch it right now. Enjoy. Watch it. Good luck. Thank do you. Do you win? Do you lose? Do I? And if you win, do you get kicked off the team? Do you stay on the like? Who knows? Okay, so go like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on TikTok. I'm like, where do you follow us? Twitter, and you know what, everybody. Fourth of July is next week. I hope you're having a fabulous summer. I can't believe it's already the last week of June. And we love you guys. By we, I mean me and my mother, who's not here. But she'll be back next week. Have a happy Fourth of July. And we love you guys.